name is Joe Santulli, and my role is curator. I'm one of the three founders of the National Video Game Museum. The whole thing is something you can't find anywhere else, because as it happens, we are the very first dedicated video game museum in the United States. So what you'll find here as a guest is um, loads and loads of interactive displays. We made the entire thing as hands-on as possible. Uh, there's over 40 playable consoles or handhelds, and there's 40 arcade cabinets as well. When I was young, before video games, I was collecting everything. I think there's a certain gene that people have that makes them either a hoarder or a collector, but it's a gene that you can't shake and you get it early on in life. Um, so I've been collecting comic books and stamps and baseball cards and coins and you name it. And video games come along and what do you know? Not only do I enjoy the medium by playing them, but they start making them on cartridges. So now I've got something that I can collect for real. So. Not having had a whole lot of money at that time, I was a teenager, I um, abandoned all of those other collections and just started collecting video games. Somewhere along the way, in the mid-90s, I met up with two other guys that were doing kind of the same thing in other parts of the United States. And we got together and did a show called Classic Gaming Expo in Las Vegas, where for the first time we brought our own collections out to be a museum. And that then evolved into showing up at industry events, where we would bring our museum out to industry events and kind of show it off at Game Developer Conference and E3 and PAX and you name it. So we did that for 17 years. And it got to the point where we had so much stuff being moved around all over the country that we kind of needed to have a permanent home for it. Then along comes Frisco and the fit was perfect. They were looking for something like this here. They're building their cultural experience for Frisco residents and, and guests. And uh, we had just the right product to kind of fill that niche for them. We expected a big rush of people when we first opened, because right, every video gamer that hears about it that can get here would have to come see a museum, right? And then the reviews were really good, so we expected maybe the next couple of weeks and then it would finally taper off. Well, it didn't taper off. What happened is the summer came, and then all of a sudden, everybody's free to come. So you don't have to work, you don't have to go to school. You know, you're out here um, kind of getting a chance to check it out. So the summer's been very, very busy. So we're, we're real happy with the attendance we've had so far. My partner, John Hardy, was the one that came up with Easter eggs. That's really his thing. Um, so we were like, well, how can we make the, uh, the, the time that you spend in the museum similar to the time that you would spend in a game where you s either stumble into or you look for some hidden message in the game, right? Because they almost all have them. There's a cheat or a glitch or an Easter egg in just about every game. So we're like, well, why don't we do it so that all of our exhibits have some sort of a hidden message somewhere? And then we make a game out of it. So you go up to this console and you say, all right, I'm ready to take the Easter egg challenge and you log in and it picks nine of the Easter eggs from the museum. There's probably close to 40 of them in there, but it picks nine at random. And then it asks you a series of multiple choice questions about where do you think you saw the Easter egg? What do you think the Easter egg was? We really kind of feel that video games are big enough and different enough from other games to have their own word. And if you look through the dictionary, you'll find lots of other words like that. I mean, video phone is a word. I mean, how can video phone be a word? video game not be a word. So we really think that that should be the way. We want people to start thinking about it that way. If you care enough about the hobby, you must believe that it's an important enough thing to have its own spot in the dictionary. Music and books and movies, almost everything now is available digitally. And you don't go to a store for those things anymore. Which means, and we're seeing that now with video games too. Video games, you don't have to go to GameStop or go to any local store to buy a game. You can just download it from your couch just like you can with music and movies, right? So it got us to thinking, this is really the time to have a museum, to have a place where you can see the physical media that these were presented on. Because not only do kids walk in here now and already they're baffled by the concept of floppy disks and CDs, right? Which pretty soon, there's gonna be a generation of kids that doesn't have any form of media other than some digital version of it. So. The idea of doing this now is we're introducing all of these generations to all of the very different ways that we've played over the years and to see how that sort of progressed into what we're going to be doing in a couple of years, which is just playing some digital version of those games. But my favorite thing to do has always been playing video games. And I think it's touched everybody's life, whether you're a teenager who does it after school every day or you're a grandma playing on Farmville. 
there's always some sort of video game in your life. And anyone that owns a phone these days is a gamer. So it's kind of important to me that video games has this place in our culture and, and now has an institution to celebrate it. I personally like video games old and new. I, I think, like I was saying before, as long as the game is has that visceral experience where you're engaged, that you're having fun playing it. I was just playing Pong, and it was one of the most competitive games I've ever played, and I'm sweating playing against somebody playing Pong. And Pong is just two bars moving and keeping a ball in between them. But I could go home and play Fallout 4 and have almost the same experience where my heart is pitter-pattering because I'm being chased by something and I have to make sure that I stay alive. Um, so the evolution of games is very clear. It's, it's very technically driven. You know, graphics from then to now are significantly different. Music is significantly different. We used to have seven people, I just read this today because Final Fantasy 15 is coming out this fall, and I just read that the original Final Fantasy had seven people designing it, which is even a lot. If you go back to a game like Pitfall for the Atari, one guy designed all of the game. But they had seven people doing Final Fantasy, the first game, and there's over 300 of them doing Final Fantasy 15. So clearly there's an evolution in how a game is produced and what it looks like and what it feels like when it's done. So I've seen the reactions of both kids and adults to seeing things that are very old or things that they might remember from their childhood. But I think the one thing that I learned here is there's a lot more bonding that goes on when you bring your kid to a museum like this and you get to show them, here are the things that I played when I was your age. Here's the computer that I used when I was your age. Here's here's Pong, which was my first game system. You were playing on a touch, some, playing a touch phone. Um, you start to see that the kids sort of kind of get it. So instead of looking at the game and saying, oh, it's Pong, it looks boring, well, mom or dad played that game. And I'm going to play it with them. And they can kind of finally see what was fun about that back then to a kid, you know, their father's age. This whole project has been a, a matter of trying to get settled in somewhere. Um, that said, we're not giving up the tours of industry events and probably a lot of public events like PAX. So we'll still be at those shows. We've got South by Southwest and, um, and uh, PAX South, right, that aren't too, too far from here. So we'll definitely be at those. Um, as far as taking it on a tour, I think we're going to need a lot more people that are young to kind of get us help, you know, help out and, and drive the stuff. Because one of the things about touring the country all those years is we had games and things located in all different corners of the country. Putting the museum here, we've sort of brought them all here now. So now, when we're doing a show in California, we don't have a thing in California. We have to drive it all the way from here to there. So it's kind of a big trip and something that we will do when we have the proper staff and resources to do it.